We're going to take a look at the Adobe Illustrator interface, and to do so, we need to launch it. You begin by launching a piece of software from the launch pad, and it's located down here in what we call the dock on the Mac. Now, you may not see it right away, so you may have to scroll between a number of screens. Mine happens to be located up here. It's the orange square with the letters AI for Adobe Illustrator. And if you just click on that, you can see it up and down there in the dock. And it presents us with a home screen. Now, in this home screen, it presents you with a number of presets for creating new files. Uh, this is a standard letter size, a postcard size, web page, uh, developing content for iPhone, or developing content for HDTV, or you have a custom size that you can choose. I could click here and set up whatever size I require. You can also go here and create new. And again, we're given a range of choices there. But I should show you here back on the home screen, you can also see a selection of recently opened files. And they can be sorted according to a number of criteria, like the size of the file, the kind of file, when it was last opened, and they can be ranked ordered from top to bottom or bottom to top. You can also show a list view of these items or back to the original icon view. We can also open other files that may be located elsewhere by clicking the open button. But back to creating new. So this is our new document window. And there's a little bit of redundancy here. Again, we can see some of the formats that we would work in, from mobile to web to print, film and video, and then art and illustration. We've also got access to some uh, templates down here. Um, and then it's showing you right now some recent formats that I've used. Again, we could cycle through these, and we could choose to work on iPhone X, iPhone 8, iPad Pro, and so on and so forth. And again, they are what we call UI kits, and these contain a number of graphics that would be used in developing user interfaces for handheld mobile devices. Again, we have different web formats, um, and print. This is where we're going to work in print. I'm going to use a letter size and we would create that. I just want to point out though that we could choose the orientation, either portrait or landscape. We're going to use the landscape format and we can also select the number of artboards. So if we were doing a multi-page document we could have several artboards in that case. It defaults to one. We'll use one and if we need more later we can add them. So we just click the Create button, and it generates the document. I'm going to use a little keyboard shortcut here with the space bar, and it gives me the grabber hand. I'm just going to move that over so it's kind of centered in that screen. So this is the interface. Um, to make sure that we're all on the same page, I would suggest that you go to Window up here in the menu bar, and from there, go to Workspace, and choose Essentials Classic. Now the reason for this is that a great deal of video content has been created using an older interface, say from Adobe Creative Cloud 2017 or 2018. We're now in Creative Cloud 2019, and the default interface looks considerably different. So if you're using an interface that's different from what you're watching on a video, there seems to be a, a disconnect that happens. Well, there obviously would be. So try to get on the same page by using the Essentials Classic workspace. I, uh, for one, find it more intuitive than the newer one, which is much reduced. So anyway, let's talk about the component parts. We've already heard the name of one, and that's the menu bar. And that's located up here, and if we scroll through it, you'll notice that there are drop-down menus, and within each of those drop-down menus, you will notice little triangles on some. This indicates, as you can see, that there is additional content within that. 
To get out of a menu, simply move away from it and release. Now, this area here is called the title bar, and you can see the title up here, Adobe Illustrator CC 2019, and this would take us back to that home screen where we were earlier, and this allows us to arrange layouts when we have multiple documents open. Right now, we've only got one document open, and we can tell that by this tab up here. It works very much like a web browser. If we had a second document open, we'd see a second tab here and so on. And so up here in the title bar, this would allow us to lay it out in a very particular way. Next, we have the control panel or the options panel. And I like myself, I refer to this as a dashboard because it's kind of like the dashboard on a car. But for official purposes, we'll call this the control panel. Um, and the control panel gives us a readout based on the tools that we have selected. So it's a contextual menu. So if we choose, let's say, the type tool, you'll notice that changes occur in the interface to reflect the fact that we're working with type now. So we get things like character, paragraph formatting, uh, type alignment, and so on. Whereas if we go into the pen tool, those things disappear because we're no longer concerned with aspects of type. So that is the control panel. Next, we have the toolbar. And the toolbar contains clusters of tools with similar functionality. So right off the top here, uh, we've got selection tools. Those first four are concerned with selecting objects that you've created on the page. We have the selection tool, direct selection tool, magic wand tool, and the lasso tool. This next cluster are drawing tools. And so we start here from the pen tool, we have the curvature tool, type tool, line tool, or line segment tool. Uh, it says the rectangle tool, but we have other shapes available in there. Again, you'll notice small triangles in the bottom right corner of the icons indicate that there are additional tools available. So these are our drawing tools. Uh, we get the brush, uh, we have what's called the shaper tool and the eraser tool. This next cluster right here relates to transform, uh, transformation. So this is changing the position, the scale, or the shape of something that you've created. Um, and so that's these four right here. Rotation, scale, um, puppet warping, and width tools. Next, we've got um, the Shape Builder tool, which allows you to create shapes out of other shapes, what we would call compound shapes. And this accesses our perspective grid. And here we have a couple um, of tools that pertain to creating very complex color schemes um, using a mesh approach, using a gradient, and we'll take a look at that in other lessons, um, blending objects together, sampling the features of objects and applying those features to other objects. That's called the eyedropper tool. And then we have um, what we call a symbol sprayer, which allows us to create an object and or series of objects, turn them into symbols, and then literally spray them down onto the page. Uh, this is for data visualization, and this is our graphing tool. And over here, we have the artboard tool. This would allow us to create new artboards, uh, edit the size of existing artboards. And this slice tool allows us to slice up the artwork that we create in preparation for layout in a web page. And the grabber hand we saw right off the, at the start, it allows us to move our page around without actually selecting any objects on that page. And here we have the zoom tool, which allows us to zoom in and out of a page. Here's our coloring. Um, that relates to the fill of an object. And this relates to the stroke of an object. And 
you'll notice that when I click on it, one jumps forward and is now active. Now, in doing this, um, we have to be familiar with the terms fill and stroke. Fill's pretty straightforward. Stroke actually relates to an outline that goes around the outside of an object. We'll see more of that later. Uh, down here, we have uh, color, gradients, and no fill. So this, these are quick access to types of fill. And here we have different drawing modes that we can activate so that the normal setting is every time we draw, the most recently drawn object always occupies a position higher up on the page. It's stacked higher. Um, if you imagine, let's say, a stack of plates, the most recently drawn object would be the top plate on that pile. And then we have different screen modes that allows us to view our pages in different manners. And the little ellipsis there allows us to go in and edit what tools are showing on our toolbar. Now, over here, we have our panels. And as you saw there, that's our co color panel. Um, these are color guides, color swatches, symbols, uh, sorry, brushes, symbols, lines, and so on and so forth. Now, each of these panels, when they pop out, these are um, these uh, various panels here, can be expanded. Now, you notice I just tore them off, and each one of them, by clicking on these little chevrons to the left on the top of the tab, will variously expand and reveal more features. And if we simply collapse it, it goes back to its iconic form using these chevrons right here. And then we can drag them and we can combine them together. And then we can move them and combine them back in so that they've been brought back to their iconic form in this bar here. You'll also notice that we have access to these tabs here for libraries, which gives us access to uh, content that we have curated. So when we create something, we can drag it into a library. We can create a whole bunch of different libraries and name them. Typically, each library would pertain to an individual client or job, and all the assets for that client or that job would be assembled in that library. So you'll notice I've got one here on branding and there are some brand designs that I've got created inside there and I now have access to them not just in Illustrator but in virtually every single Adobe program if in fact they accept this format of graphic. And this is the property inspect. This gives us feedback as to the nature and substance of an object that we've created on the page. If we select it, it would give a readout on salient information about that object and would allow us to change some aspects of it. 